Before you watch this video, please, please promise me you will go watch the full reveal of the kitchen makeover. I don't want you to spoil anything for yourself. This organization vlog kind of takes place during the final moments of this kitchen makeover. So don't spoil anything. You can go watch that right now and then come right back. But if you've already seen that, welcome back. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for being here. This is gonna be a really casual video where I just get my kitchen organized. As you may know, this has been a very long process. I'm just ready to move into the kitchen. My boyfriend is about to break up with me. No, he's not, but I worry about it. I worry about if I don't move us back into this kitchen, we won't be together. This man wants to cook. He wants to cook for friends and family. So um, let's get this place set up so that we can enjoy it. Yesterday, I started moving the items from a little glass hutch that I have into the new glorious glass bar pantry hutch thing. Okay, we're not gonna use the upstairs fridge, so we're just turning it into a wine cellar. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I was wondering, I was like, where do we put all these? Yeah, we don't need to keep them. First of all, we don't want a bajillion bottles of wine just out on the shelf forever. I'd rather have them in a dark, cold place. Also, yeah, we should be storing. Okay, so upstairs is a wine cellar. Okay. Yeah. It's perfect. Good thinking. Thank you. I, uh, I do have good thoughts. The other thing I did yesterday was put appliances up here. I do have an appliance garage, which is really just gonna hold the coffee maker, I think, and um, a microwave. I wasn't gonna have a microwave, and therefore more stuff would have fit. Because I'm having a microwave go in here, I bought the smallest one I could find. And it fits, look at that. Wow. But because I, I have that side of the microwave, this side can only fit the coffee maker. So the rest of the appliances do have to live up here and then just be easily accessible to reach when I need it. I have no idea how long it's gonna take me to move into this kitchen. I would love to hear your guesses in the comments down below how many days I might be working on this for. Maybe those of you that have experience with moving into and organizing a kitchen will have an idea, but let me know your guesses. But my whole thought process is I have the upstairs kitchen that we have been living out of and um, using. Ellie and I both, when we moved in together, accumulated items from each of our spaces. So my plan is to basically go through everything, figure out what is the best of each item that we have. I want to take those items, find them a home in a kitchen, in the kitchen that makes sense, and then from there work on like the actual organization, like you know, do I need new jars for spices? How do my utensils get organized? Am I making inserts? These are all questions, but I think first thing is really to just like do a rough move in of the whole kitchen. Sounds like a plan, right? I'm in the upstairs bedroom where some of these boxes have been kept. Text graphic, I'm overwhelmed. I'm in this weird position where I need to Yeah, okay. <laughs> Elliot's office, aka the kitchen, aka kitchen, storage, the place office, I need to move everything out of, laundry room. Yeah. Is there anything the room can't do? Like, how should we go about this? Like, is there a world where we pull everything out? It's like, whose scissors are better? Yeah. You're stopping the smell of the mint. Stopping the smell of the mint. I just needed a calming moment. It actually kind of smells like B.O. Not me. Okay, I'm also trying to find cute things to style the kitchen with. Wood spoon. Glass straw. <laughs> is there more stuff? Of, what's in those black boxes? Do I bring this down? I think so. Oh, this is the rest of my kitchen stuff. Where's my kitchen stuff? So I never really had a spot for my yoga mat. I'm so glad that I have 
a cabinet that's big enough. So I think this is gonna be like the workout bin. My old dance shoes. Like I can't get rid of them. What if I need to dance again one day? Um, so literally overnight it became summer, which is sick. I've just been doing work today. This is my new office in the kitchen. <laughs> but I do have a couple hours left here at the end of the day. So I think we should start moving some things in because it has been a little difficult over the last, your kitchen under reno is one thing, but then I've been like partially moving into both and like trying to use this new space, especially because this is where the dishwasher is. Um, and that's just not been happening. So let's continue to move things in, no matter how long it takes. This organization has not been cute. Even though basically whatever we have doubles of, like some of it'll stay up here. I think I'm gonna bring it all downstairs to sort. Okay, so I've gone through and I found kind of all of the duplicates here, consolidated some things. There's still a lot, of, a lot of honey. And Elliot has a lot of spices. Some of them, I don't even know. So explain why we have two half-opened star anise. Not to mention, I already had my own. This is what happens when you combine two households. Anyways, now comes the task. I think of like starting to figure out where I want to put things. And then from there, we organize more. It's just like little baby steps of organization. My thought is that here above the stove, I put all like the oils. Does that make sense? We're gonna start with this and then if we need to adjust, we do that. Oh, sorry, oils and vinegars. And then I got a lot of room up there for large things. Large storage is always really helpful. Something I don't really love about these new cabinets of mine is that they don't come out super far, like they're a little bit set back. And I wish I kind of did a opening door front like this, but then with all of the stack drawers inside, because with it pulled out, it's just a little hard to access as you can see. But yeah, I don't know. I maybe would have done this differently. Let's see what we can put in it. I'm calling this like the breakfast cabinet as of right now. Granola, honey, nuts, kind of all those things that make good breakfast foods. Chia seeds, vitamins. I definitely need some jars for these items. I think this is basically done. I like what you've done here. Okay, be helpful. Like, is this really a good breakfast corner? How many kinds of honey do we need? Well, they're all different kinds. Okay, it's more like the bigger things. Like, what about cans? Tomato, tuna. What about rice? Big thing of olive oil, pasta. Dried goods go What ahead. about pots, pans? Now we just don't have enough room in this kitchen. That's why I'm getting stressed. Here, what do you have against using these for us? That's Tupperware. First of all, this, these things are empty. No, they're not. They won't be. And we also don't have that much Tupperware. What do you think? I mean, we don't need a whole drawer for napkins. I'm feeling attacked. Okay, so after some back and forth, we came up with a few good solutions, but I'll put those into play tomorrow. Oh. 
It's just sugar, okay? It's just sugar. There's no zhuzh to it, there's no magic. Now, let me demonstrate the power of wildflower honey. Uh -huh. Yeah, I hear ya. Yeah, no, shit. Good. Okay, put this upstairs in the spare then. And then leave that downstairs. Oh, well, this is a lot heavier than I did. Ooh, we have extra rimmer? Rimmer? <laughs> Babe, do you want some rimmer with that star anus? Why are you making fun of me? I know. It's just, oh, it literally It literally rimmer. says rimmer. Huh. I didn't realize we were recording. <laughs> I know you did because you were being yourself. <laughs> yourself. Oh no. Oh no. What's this one? Oh, that's a pH tester. For beta fish? You buy it for an aquarium, but if you're ever like making hot sauces or any kind of ferment. Do you use you... it? I bought it when I was planning on. Do you you? <laughs> no. It lives upstairs? It can live upstairs. I got this for Elliot's birthday present. From Kijiji, $250, second hand. Oh my god, Just fit. Okay, now with pretty much most things moved in and for those of you that are counting days, you can add a day in there because I did some in the evening with Elliot kind of throughout the week. It's time to actually like make things nicely organized, kind of clear, concise, organized. It may be kind of cute. This is where the realistic organization comes into play. There's a couple of things that I don't want to do that I've seen in some other kitchen organization videos. I don't want to go out and buy a bunch of things, like a bunch of plastic containers to kind of like organize things in. I don't want to rehouse like every single thing I have. I just don't think that's realistic. I don't think that you're always going to be doing that when you get home from the grocery store. But I do think it's really smart to rehouse if things don't fit in your current cabinets if it's hard for you to tell what items you have. Um, and also if you are a bulk shopper, which I definitely try to do to the best I can, doesn't always happen, but shopping bulk is like more affordable and more sustainable and definitely more aesthetic when you can just put it right into your glass jars. So drawer organizers, glass jars, labels, and a few other tips and hacks I'm gonna do in order to organize this kitchen. But let's start with the drawers, because they're the harder thing. So I want to get it done and out of the way. Let's go. So the first thing I'm going to do to organize my drawers is actually organize them without an organizer. This means figuring out what should go where, how they're kind of going to look, before I measure and go ahead and make some inserts. After looking at a bunch of material at the hardware store, figuring out how we would make a drawer insert from scratch, I realized that just the material and time that it would take is not worth it when there are a few products on the market that allow you to easily customize a drawer insert. I picked up some of these spring-loaded drawer organizers and in combination with this utensil holder made out of bamboo, I think that this is the best bang for my buck and definitely time. I did do a DIY drawer organizer out of MDF and that method worked out pretty well for me. It didn't use any tools. The only thing I would do differently is maybe add a few more cross pieces the next time I did it and glued them together. But I don't think that's gonna be the best solution for all of these kind of like smaller utensils that I have. That worked out well in the bathroom when I had lots of like larger items.
let's talk aesthetic jars and containers in the kitchen. I don't think that buying a whole bunch of brand new jars that all look exactly the same or from the same line is super realistic because eventually you're gonna break a jar, you're gonna need new jars and additional jars, and then everything's not gonna match and it's gonna make you sad. So if we just go with an eclectic mix of different sized jars from the beginning, then you can pick the right jar that fits the needs and you can probably get it secondhand. I use jars left over from like soups and other things that I buy. Um, I have hand-me-down jars from my grandma. Facebook Marketplace also has a lot of jar options as well as even the thrift store. I just need to interrupt this video for this sick piece. It's like, what is even is it? It's like yarn. Like, what do you call this? It's beautiful. Now, if you are going the secondhand jar route, there is an easy way to sanitize them. You can just put it in boiling water, make sure it's fully covered for about 10 minutes. I will put the information down below, but if you are a different altitude, you actually have to change the amount of time that you boil something in order to sanitize it. I didn't know this. I was today years old. Okay, let's get to jarring. This is so jarring. Ah, do you get it? Elliot actually has this funnel specifically for filling jars. It's gonna come in handy. Like this? I can't tell what this is. This needs to be in a jar. Over the years, I've used about five different ways to label things, and I now have a favorite. In the beginning, it's like the embossing machine label, which is very time consuming. Then there's sticker labels that you can either print on or write on, and I'm just never, I've never been a huge fan of stickers because eventually when you have to take them off, it's fucking annoying. <laughs> then there's just writing directly onto glass or plastic. Liquid chalk goes on really easily, is pretty bright, but it does wipe off easily, although maybe that's something that you are looking for. A china marker slash wax pencil slash grease pencil it doesn't give you the cleanest finish, but it is super quick, super easy, and it won't come off unless you're kind of scrubbing it a little bit or scratching at it. And lastly, if you want to spend a little bit more money, get beautiful printing in either a thick or a fine tip, then check out a oil paint pen. This has, I would say, the same durability, maybe a little bit better than the wax pencil. While I was at the thrift store, I actually found this towel rod, which I thought would be perfect to put in my cabinet to hold up my cutting boards. This is not easy. For spices that were in jars, I am removing labels and labeling them with the oil paint Sharpie. <coughs> Oh my god, that is pepper. For those that did not come in glass jars, I am rehousing and labeling. In the spice cupboard, I wanted to add a little shelf for some better visibility, so I made it out of some scrap bamboo that we had at the studio. In conclusion, I don't think there's any exact way to organize a kitchen. And I actually found this a little bit frustrating. Like when I'm deciding what goes where, 
it is kind of breakfast, but it also could relate to baking, so, but sometimes you use it like a spice. It's like, what, cinnamon, where does she go? I don't know, and there's a lot of other examples of things that apply to multiple areas, so ultimately, you just gotta do what works best for you. And I think it's important that this is kind of a slow venture. Even while filming this video, I feel like I needed to get it all done for the video, but that just isn't realistic, and I kinda wanna live in the space and see what works best for me, where I need to move things around, and I found myself kind of cramming everything into one drawer when all of a sudden I had two extra empty drawers, so I didn't need to cram things as much. Honestly, this whole process has made me a little kitchened out, but Becky actually did her two-part kitchen series in her old home, but the tips in there are still so valid and I was thinking of them as I was going through my kitchen. Um, she has a couple of organization hacks, so if you are interested in more kitchen organization, have you not So if you are interested in more kitchen organization, I would definitely check out that series. It'll be linked here. Thanks for watching.